Hey guys, it's your boy Lamarck LP. I'm here with my grandmother. My name is Teresa P. And my grandson uh, left out a few of the important things that I would like to bring up for you. And one, I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. And I bring that up because every year they have a taste fest and my peach cobbler has been one of the most sought after items along with homemade rolls, but today is peach cobbler. So I'm, I'm not gonna really do the traditional, I'm just gonna give, tell you some pointers on how you can make the same for yourself. First, I have prepared, and I'm gonna call this Teresa Peach, Mama T, that's what I'm better known as, Mama T's This and That Peach Cobbler. Because it's a little of this and a little of that. But once we put it all together, you will not be disappointed. First, I have prepared the bottom crust. And as you may see, it may not look as precision, but that's why it's called homemade. So I rolled out the crust. And save yourself some time. Buy your pre-made crust. This is Laura Lynn. It's a very um, well-known brand, of course, Pillsbury, and whoever you choose will, is sufficient. So I rolled out the crust just a little bit thinner so that it would be nice and crispy. So I rolled out the crust, and I put it in my Pyrex dish, and while I'm putting my other ingredients together, this will be baking. Okay, when I say my other ingredients, let me identify them first. And of course, I did a, my pre-washing of the hands before I entered the kitchen. So, I'll save this little bit to last, but I have just more than salt, the pie crust like I identified, domino sugar, cornstarch for the thickening, light brown sugar, gives it that little extra taste, Del Monte sliced peaches, and again, any brand of peaches will do, even peaches off the tree. They are a little bit softer, quite not as not quite as firm as they would be if you purchase them in the can. And I have coconut extract, pure lemon flavoring, pure vanilla flavoring, and even though I want to say that uh, my cloves is the secret ingredient, and I really don't know what it is, but so far I'm gonna say it's the cloves that makes the peach cobbler. And of course, you always need some butter. So I have my butter, and I'm gonna get it started with first melting the butter. Everyone knows with melted butter, you gotta be careful that your butter doesn't burn. So, I will turn my oven on and keep a watchful eye so that my butter will melt. Now with the other ingredients, it's just kind of just dump them in. But the biggest secret that I will tell you is do not cook your peaches and your syrup together because your peaches will get too soft and they will not make for the best peach cobbler. So as soon as the butter melts a little bit, I'm going to pour the juice from the peach cobbler in my saucepan, add the other ingredients, and when they come to a boil, we'll take a short commercial break, and I'll show you how to prepare the rest. I'm back. My butter is melted, and I'm going to show you how to add the other ingredients. You can sweeten to taste. This is about a cup of sugar. So I pour that in. Of course, the heat will melt the sugar. The ground cloves, just enough to give it a color. This is a teaspoonful. And the reason why I call it this and that, because I really don't measure, I just put it in. And usually it comes out. So I'm gonna, for beginners, start off with a teaspoon and usually that, that'll tell the story. And in the process, if you think it doesn't have enough, it needs a little bit more, then feel free to experiment until you get it to your family's liking. 
Here's the pure vanilla. Pour that in. And notice if you set your ingredients to the left or to the right so that they get more. So that was my coconut flavoring. And just as a little bit of cinnamon would would just give it enough taste for a different spice. And the cornstarch mixture. And I usually just, just throw, people say a pinch of salt, just a pinch, just a pinch. And usually you put your two fingers together or again, use your spoon. And just so the tip of the fork has a little bit of the salt. Now I told you, I do not put the peaches and the juice, so let's drain the juice into your mixture. This is what I really call homemade, so you don't have to waste a lot of dishes. Now this mixture is going to thicken up, but it's not going to thicken up to the consistency that you would like it. So I'm stirring it up. I'm going to put it back on the fire. The fire is going to boil, and when it starts boiling, then I'm going to make, and I'll show you that while this is boiling. I'm going to make a cornstarch mixture. Why cornstarch? Because it does not interfere with the color of your ingredients. So a little bit of cornstarch, maybe a half a teaspoon full. And cornstarch mixes better in warm water. So, a little bit of warm water, stir it up, and I'm going to let this sit, so by the time that my pot boils, I'll add this mixture, and it'll be just a little bit thicker. Also, brown sugar, that just helps to brown your syrup so it doesn't look so pale. And it'll be a nice color to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown sugar when I bring the pot back to my uh, cooling plate. So we've used all the ingredients so far. And my real secret ingredient, and you definitely don't put it in until after the last item, is a little bit of real rum. And when I say a little bit, I'll show you what I call a little bit. And we'll put it in there. If you put it in there while it's boiling, it's going to boil out. So that's why you do not put it in there until after your mixture has thickened up. So it takes about maybe five minutes for your mixture to really have the consistency of the syrup for your peach cobbler. So while that's taking the five minutes, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. And here's the best part. My uh, liquid solution has reached the prime consistency. And always remember that it's going to cook a little bit more in the oven, so you don't want it to get as thick as it would be. And I will pour my peaches. Well, first, I, and I tend to maybe, or to not forget any item, I tend to pour it first. So this was that rum. This is the rum. So I poured it into my liquid, stir it up, and like I told you, you don't want to put it in there while it's boiling because it'll boil right on out. I put my peaches and my pie crust, and of course peaches and some ingredients are to your liking. If you like more peaches, open up a can, uh, one of the smaller cans depending on the size bowl you use. And if you want your syrup thicker, boil it a little longer, everything is trial and error. I don't know of a cook that made his first meal and it was perfect. 
So by trial and error, or if it was perfect, he continued to make it better and better. So I'm pouring my juice on my peaches, and boy, does that look good. And if you just want to taste your syrup to make sure you got the right amount of sugar in it, that would be fine. Thank you. Yeah, delicious. Now, as you see, here's my top pie crust. And I did roll it just a little bit thinner as well. So I'm going to, and there's no right or wrong way to cover your peaches. It's just to make sure that they are covered. So I picked up my top crust and give it a little flip. And the flower side down because your smoother side makes a better presentation. And just kind of fold it in under, all the way around. You might want to get, get your fork and make some pretty little crippets on the edge. And that's what I'm going to do. Now again, just press it so that it won't slide down once it gets in your oven. Maybe get this just a little bit of beauty. And to make sure your pie crust gets a little air while it's cooking, you perforate your top crust with any, any little design. I know you've probably seen the little indentations in the pie crust, but just, just to give your juice some breathing room. Whatever you decide to make as for a pitcher is fine. Also, as a last touch for your crust, put a little sugar like this, and it makes your crust brown Nice, smooth, pretty, and of course, if you want it to have that buttery taste, I'm going to, well, it's just before I put it in the oven, I'm going to put some little segments of butter just on the corners and the top so it'll melt and my crust will be nice and brown. So when this comes out of the oven, I will see you in about maybe like 20 to 30 minutes. Check on it. The browning of the crust gives you an idea of whether it's done or not. All righty. Two. Our pie is out of the oven, and most times you can tell whether your delicacy is worth serving. I'm looking at the, the juices from the pie around the corners, the crust, is a golden brown, and I think according to this dish, all I need to do is now serve it with the love that it deserves. Thank you, and see you next time. Goodbye.